let's talk about data pipelines, what they are, when, and how they're used. So I want to start with a, a simple idea. Most of us are fortunate enough to turn on the tap whenever we like and fresh, clean water comes out. Uh, however, have you, have you thought about how that water actually gets to you? Well, water starts out in our lakes, our oceans, and even our rivers. But most of us probably wouldn't drink straight from the lake, right? We have to treat and transform this water into something that's safe for us to use. And we do this using treatment facilities. And we get the water from where it is to where it needs to go using water pipelines, right? Now, once that water uh, has gotten from the source to their treatment plants, it's then cleansed and, and made sure it's safe to use, and then it's sent out using even more pipelines to where we need it, and we use it in a couple different places. We need it for drinking water. We need it for cleaning. And we also need it for agriculture, right? So we use even more pipelines to get this water to where it's needed. Okay, now, as you can see, water pipelines take water from where it is to where it's needed. Now, we can start to think about data in organizations in a very similar way. So data in organizations starts out in data lakes. It's in different databases that are uh, a part of different SaaS applications. Uh, some applications are on-prem. And then we also have streaming data, which uh, is kind of like our river here. Um, now, this can be data that uh, is coming in in real time. So an example of that could be sensor data from uh, factories, where data is being collected every second and being sent, uh, uh, and being sent back up to our repositories. So just like our water sources, this data is dirty, it's contaminated, and it must be uh, cleaned and transformed before it's useful uh, in helping us make business decisions. Now, when we talk, so how do we do this work? We do it using not water pipelines, but data pipelines. Okay. So, when we talk about data pipelines, we have a few different processes that we can use um, to help us handle the task of transforming and cleaning this data. We can use uh, processes like ETL. We can use data replication. We can also use something called data virtualization. Right? Okay. So one of the most common processes is ETL, which stands for Extract, Transform, and Load. And that does exactly what it sounds like. It extracts data from where it is. It transforms it by um, cleaning up uh, uh, mismatching data, by taking care of uh, missing values, getting rid of duplicated data, putting in, uh, making sure the right columns are there and then loading it into uh, uh, a landing repository uh, for uh, ready-to-use business data. An example of one of these repositories could be an enterprise data warehouse, right? Okay, so, so most of the time we use something called batch processing, which uh, means that on a given schedule, we load data into our ETL tool and then uh, load it to where it needs to be. But we could also have stream ingestion, which would uh, support the streaming data that I mentioned earlier. So it's continuously taking data in, transforming it, and then continuously loading it to where it needs to be. Okay, now another tool that we might see is data replication. So what this involves is a continuously replicating and copying data into uh, another repository, 
uh, before being loaded or used by our use case. So we could have a repository here in the middle that copies data from our source into this, into this repository. So why would we do that, right? Uh, well, one of the reasons could be that the application or use case where we need this data uh, needs to have a really high performance backend to it. And it's possible that our source data can't support something like that. Uh, another reason could be for backup and disaster recovery reasons. So in the situation where our source data goes offline for some reason, we still have this backup um, to keep running our business processes against. OK. So the last one I want to touch on is data virtualization. So all of the methods that I've described so far require you to copy data from where it is and move it into another repository. But what if we want to test out a new data use case and don't want to go through a large data transformation project? Well, in that case, we can use a technology called data virtualization to simply virtualize access to our data sources and only query them in real time when we need them without copying them over. And once we're happy with the uh, outcome of our, our test use case, we can go back and build out these formal data pipelines. So data virtualization technology allows us to access all these disparate data sources uh, without having to go through uh, building out um, permanent data pipelines. So once we're satisfied with the results of our data virtualization project, we can build a formal data pipeline that can support the massive amounts of data uh, that we need, to, that we need uh, in a production uh, use case. Now, unfortunately, we haven't figured out a way how to virtualize water, but we can definitely do it with data in our, in our organizations. OK, so after we've uh, used all these different processes to get data ready for uh, analysis or different applications, we can start using it. So what are the different ways in which we can use this data? Well, we might need it for our business intelligence platforms that uh, uh, are needed for different types of reporting. Well, we might also need it for uh, machine learning use cases, right? So machine learning requires tons and tons of high quality data. So we need to use uh, these data pipeline tools to feed our machine learning uh, algorithms. And so this clean data can be fed into our machine learning models uh, to help us start making better and smarter decisions in our business. OK, so as we can see, Data pipelines take data from data producers and give them to data consumers. Thank you. If you have questions, please drop us a line below. And if you want to see more videos like this in the future, please like and subscribe.